Wine never travels alone. It tells many stories, and the history of Logroño is the story of Franco Española's winery. In 1890, Frederic Anglad founds the winery. The first grape harvest in 1891 gives birth to the wines Diamante, Royal, and Borgogna. The Phylloxera plague comes to France. This insect attacks the roots of grapevines. In 1899, the plague arrives in La Rioja, and Franco Españolas is the first winery in Spain to use a French method to prevent the plague. Some of the greatest exports of the winery take place during the First World War, when La Rioja becomes a reference point for wine exportation to the neutral countries in Europe. Switzerland, Holland, and Norway are the countries where sales increase the most. So begins the adventure of Franco Españolas in its quest to travel around the world. But wait a minute, there's a small detail here. In 1919, Marco Seguizaba was born. But that's another story, or perhaps another part of history. Thanks to the influence of the Count of Romanones, the wines Royal and Diamante travel around Europe. The Roaring Twenties happily ask for Franco Española's wines. The bars in Logroño increasingly buy the product, while the winery improves its machinery and invests in advertising and its first toilet. In 1933, the United States ends the prohibition and Franco Española's winery crosses the Atlantic to sell in America. Royal Claret and Diamante appear on the wine menus of important New York City hotels, such as the Fusco, the Waldorf Astoria, or the Whitehall Club, where the wines become an important feature of many banquets and ceremonies. However, Spain isn't doing so well. During the Spanish Civil War, wine seizures are made for the army. The winery meets an enemy it couldn't imagine, the closing of Spain's borders. Right after the Madrid deal, Spain enters the UNESCO, the UN, and the IMF. The Regulatory Council of La Rioja reappears. The council encourages the teaching of enology in the country and requires that farmers cultivate grapevines and elaborate wine properly. The sales in Spain grow spectacularly, but also in the rest of the world. Many celebrities, such as Ernest Hemingway, visit the winery. There's no doubt the winery has become one of the most important spots in Logroño. 1964, the year of the best harvest of the 20th century. The United States becomes one of the biggest buyers from Franco Española's winery. Its wines appear at important events, such as the lunch which was prepared to host U.S. President Eisenhower in Madrid, or the wedding of Queen Fabiola of Belgium. 1971 and 1972 are bad years for La Rioja, and in 1973, the ascendance of the winery meets another enemy, the international oil crisis. A group of financial institutions arrive in Logroño to take advantage of the crisis and buy several wineries, including Franco Española's. But remember that man who was born in 1919? Marco Seguizabal, in 1984, buys the winery, and it becomes a family business for the first time in its history. Because he loved culture and sports, he was named president of the Logroñez football team, taking the club to its best period in the Spanish First Division for almost 10 years of glory. At that time, he also produced the film Orofino, filmed inside the winery. With just one objective, which was to make the best wine you could ever imagine, and with great business vision, Marcos manages to bring back the winery's distinctive international fame. In recent years, it has also won several awards. Franco Española's winery has a significant online presence through its website, the use of social networks, and an online store called vinogaleria.com. Carlos and Rosa, descendants of Marcos, have dedicated their lives to running the winery together with their father. And that's how a family stays united and keeps a winery with 125 years of history strong. 125 years after the romantic Frenchman who founded it, 
Franco Españoles is now a great winery, selling in more than 60 countries and maintaining its leadership in the Spanish market. The winery has a strong commitment to culture and the history of wine. And so now, we would like to celebrate its 125 years of history. <laughs>